this video has helpful tips on drawing cars as well as information on cars from America in the 1950s. I want people to be less afraid to draw cars. Even if there's something a bit off or wonky in the perspective or drawing, at least you tried. A lot of people are scared to draw cars, but I think you shouldn't be scared to draw anything. Before you begin drawing, it's a good idea to gather very good reference. A three-dimensional model of a car is often the absolute best because you can rotate it and look at it from all different angles but it's also very good to get photo reference of the same type of car because small details like rear view mirrors are often removed from models and toys, especially at small scale because they get broken off easily or become sharp at a small size. Make sure to look at the geometric forms and the way it fits into three dimensional space. Using perspective is often extremely helpful when drawing cars. As you can see, I done a sketch layer first, then on a layer on top, I did the line art. Line art works extremely well for cars. I find it clarifies the forms and shapes exceptionally well and allows the car to be seen more clearly. As it is a human made object, I find line art is very helpful. On a layer underneath the lines, I began painting things in. I'm using a large area of solid color, which I then alpha locked in Procreate, so I can only paint on top of those areas. I'm filling in some flats and then going in with details. I'm working back and forth to add details in different areas and shading. I'm observing the fact that there's reflected light on these shiny surfaces to add things like the green of the grass reflecting on some of the metal and glass surfaces. I also picked out some reference from public domain images that I found to be particularly beautiful cars from this era. The cars of the 1950s are basically beautiful sculptures on wheels most modern cars are nowhere near as beautiful, and I truly don't understand why cars are so much uglier now than they used to be. Companies used to compete to make the most beautiful cars they possibly could, and now they look like refrigerators turned on their side. But the old cars still exist, and old photo reference, so we can still paint cars based on that. When I create fantasy cars, and I do sometimes, I tend to base them on American cars from the 1950s. It's also a good idea to look at multiple references so that small details you might have missed on one will show up on the other. Deciding what angle to draw a car at is often important. Determining the perspective the car sits on is something that can sometimes be easier than other times. I advise trying to figure out the perspective first, although it's still easy sometimes to make perspective mistakes. Here, I done three quarter front views, which is one of the more beautiful views in my opinion, and I would recommend doing this view for a car if you want to do a picture. However, I did many different angles. This one is from behind. I'm roughing it in with a sketch on a sketch layer. I focused more in on the Hudson Hornet because first of all, I could find good reference, and second of all, I think it's one of the most beautiful of all the cars I've ever seen. I worked on getting the details in. Sometimes when you're drawing small enough, you can simplify and omit details, and other times you want to get every little bit in there. I worked carefully by duplicating things on either side. In this case, I was actually drawing everything in, rather than actually using some sort of symmetry or duplication. The symmetry tool was added to Procreate shortly after I finished this video, which is kind of ironic because it would have actually been really useful for some parts of this video. I did a solid flat color underneath the line art here, and as you can see, I filled in the background details first. It's a little jarring on the eyes, so maybe I shouldn't have done that. But I filled in a lot of the solid colors here. Flatting is a common technique that can be used. I'm getting more of the solid colors in before putting in any of the details. Getting the underneath color that is the mid-tone, then adding in the highlights and the shadows. This technique is very easily used digitally, but is also easy to do with opaque mediums like acrylic, oils, or gouache. Some features to look for in 1950 cars, as well as if you're making fantasy cars based on cars from the 1950s. Many cars have multiple headlights. Fins on the rear, but not all have this. Many lines, symbols, and other accents made either of chrome or stainless steel, and sometimes both. Bumpers were large and thick, heavy gauge solid steel. Cars were large, wide and roomy, and also tended to be much longer than the average car now. Beautiful pastels are jewel tone, often vibrant color paint jobs. There's also two-tone paint jobs, such as having red and cream. Matching interiors, the paint on the vinyl, 
such as red and cream interiors on a two-tone red and cream car. The dashboard was often plastic, it was also was often color matched. Sometimes interiors were more gray, like I was doing in these pictures, but more often they actually matched the colors of the car. White walled tires, which I think are actually more beautiful than pure black ones. Wheel discs were often very decorative and made of stainless steel and absolutely never made of plastic. Parts of the car interiors also included chrome and or stainless steel decorative symbols and other accents. Fender skirts and covers over the rear wheels to make a sleek line along the body, as well as being riding low to the ground, so the car was actually much lower to the ground and worked better on smooth, high quality roads. Convertible and hardtop versions of cars were both available for every single car pretty much made in the 1950s. There may be an exception I couldn't find. There were more convertibles the further south you went in North America, and fewer the further north. When roughing in cars, look at the basic geometric shapes and forms, as well as getting the perspective as correct as you can manage. But if you make a mistake, I don't think it's the end of the world. We're all learning and we're not drawing things perfectly every single time we try. For example, the car I'm drawing now is one I made a perspective error on. There's something a bit off about the seats inside compared to the rest of the car, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't keep trying. It looks decent, but I can tell it's a bit off. It's a good idea to be okay with things being imperfect and just try to do better next time. The grills and bumpers at the front of the cars were the best way of identifying which company or brand a car was made by as each one has its own styling. Individual cars had it very slightly, but it tended to be more similar as long as it was a member of the same brand or family. Not all cars from this era had two rear view mirrors. Some of them only had one on the driver's side and lacked one on the passenger side. Interestingly, seat belts were not standard or required equipment in cars. The very first seat belt was not introduced until 1949. In 1955, Ford and other companies started making them very common options, and by 1958, most cars had seat belts as a standard equipment, but they were not legally required by law until 1983, and then only for the front seats. It wasn't until 1989 that everyone had to wear seat belts legally in a car. Just as an interesting aside, it seems like it's strange that it took that long for seat belts to become standard and required. If possible, you should take your own photo reference of old cars that you can run into in the real world, including going to old car shows if you have one nearby. If you run into an old car, I also recommend doing your best to sketch it in a sketchbook. They are more beautiful and inspiring than modern cars, at least to me, and I find them to be one of the more beautiful things you can draw that isn't actually an animal or part of nature. Sometimes the challenge of drawing something that's a little more difficult is definitely worthwhile venture. Remember, even if you don't get there perfectly, just like with drawing humans, it's try, try again. Try not to be afraid to draw cars. And I hope these tips were helpful to everyone. I used Procreate to paint this, so I also used the Alpha Lock tool to lock the line art and paint just over where I'd already drawn the lines. I hope that this video was helpful to you and that you are able to use these tips to go forth and draw and paint 1950s cars. More videos coming up and I'd be willing to accept any questions or comments below. Have a wonderful day! Goodbye!